There are a broad set of diagnoses with which people come. If there is some level of mood depression, they certainly will come in with a diagnosis of depression, saying even if there's no history of depression in the past, someone who in the you know, prime of life in their 50s, for example, uh, who is down or who is more withdrawn and quiet, the assumption will be uh, this is depression. And they may be treated and be unresponsive to treatment with antidepressants and eventually they find their way to a specialist and will make the diagnosis. One of the other things I have commonly seen uh, is the suspicion that people were either uh, uh, alcohol abusers or uh, drug abusers because their judgment is impaired, because their memory is impaired, uh, sometimes because the insight that they have had, what we call executive function, is impaired and it isn't what got them to this point in their life where people work for them and are reporting that there's something different, something changed. So I've seen a lot of people who've come in with the impression that they had been abusing drugs in some way, even though drug screens may have been negative if the physician thought of it. Uh, humans are pretty complicated. In your 50s, in your 60s, your brain is still a very active, very resilient organism. We term this brain reserve, that your brain fights its way through whatever it is that's attacking it and maintains behaviors for a long time, makes it slower for the changes to occur. And sometimes, if you think about a person at 85 who begins to develop problems, that's an 85-year-old brain with 85-year-old blood vessels, they have less ability to fight back against the neurodegeneration, although we still do see it. We see them growing new connections, even in people that old. We see them enlarging the connections between cells in an effort to push through their uh, signaling. But if you're in your 50s or your early 60s, you've got a younger brain that's much more adept at making new connections, at upregulating levels of chemicals that are being attacked. And so the behaviors that you see in people who are younger are oftentimes not the classic kinds of things you see in people who are older because what you have in the younger people is the brain fighting back a little more effectively to try and maintain itself. Some things you can't fix, you, can't, you try to defend and you can't, but other things you do maintain for longer. Those confusing looking behaviors and thinking changes are often what make people not think about Alzheimer's as an early diagnosis or lead to a different diagnosis. Well, this is so odd that it must be drugs, or this is so odd that it must be some kind of psychiatric disorder. And of course, psychiatric disorders, hallucinations, delusions, anxiety, also show up with early Alzheimer's disease, and sometimes they make things a little more muddied. So if you're not sure if the diagnosis is still tentative, these are people who need to go find a specialist. Point of diagnosis, just I really I need a tight answer. Yep. The reaction of people when they hear those words, and that's the human moment. Right. Describe that human moment when you have somebody in their early 50s. Well, my first comment is that it is the very, very rare case in which people are completely shocked by it. Most people who make their way into the research centers are terrified that they'll be confirmed in their increasing suspicion. After all, they have come to a memory clinic. The memory clinics are commonly Alzheimer's centers. People know that this memory expert that they go to see at a university works in an Alzheimer's research center or he or she is known for her research in Alzheimer's disease. What they are really there for you to tell them is give me another strange diagnosis that you have something better for. Please do not confirm this. In some cases where there's a family history, uh, other people in the family who've gotten the disease in their late 50s or early 60s, it's kind of a sinking feeling that they have come to you to confirm it. But it is true that no matter what their expectation was or what their hopes were, that your life is instantly transformed at this point. My objective would be that that instant transformation we have now, that you have a disorder for which you know there's no therapy right now, gets changed to, okay, how soon do we start the drugs? I hope within five or 10 years that this first wave of new drugs that are coming out now that are specifically targeted at this disease, not some non-specific kind of symptom we hope it'll treat, would change people from going, oh, the future is going to be very dim to, okay, how fast do we start the therapy?